first guy in our friend group to win and we were traveling together and everything was lovely and that obviously drove all of us to be like wow this is doable Possibly. now we can yeah. definitely everybody do this. can agree yeah. on that they're just an all-round incredible personality on the sunshine tour this morning exciting for us very personal to us uh we've known carl barker for quite some time on the show uh, he's always uh, there's been a few times he's been a bit behind the scenes we also did a wonderful shootout for longest drive with Corbin Bosch and Carl, which the footage perhaps will be roll now <laughs> as we as we speak. But we've got Carl Barkey, a sunshine to a player, uh, currently sitting fourth on the order of merit. Uh, now sponsored by the Korea guys. We've um, also is the current players championship, which was hosted at Danefin, and the sponsor being Stella Artois. Yeah. So Stella, we've got your beers here. It's also nice and chilled and cold. <laughs> and um, he came from the sec twenty second line, twenty second order of merit last year, and um, with incredible sponsorships. But I would say everybody can agree on that. They're just an all round incredible personality on the Sunshine Tour. Thank you, Albert. Thank Welcome, you, Welcome, Carl, this and is, thank uh, you for joining us and taking the time to do so. This is fantastic. I've been excited for this uh, for a long time now, and uh, yeah, let's get into the chat. And uh, and uh, my partner, uh, uh, Arthur, Welcome to you this Thank morning. Thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling fresh this morning. Yeah, looking well, you've well, got my a boy. fresh haircut. Uh, I mean, no, for you, good. I mean that shave. The shave is fresh. Haircut, everything. Um, got some sleep last night. I'm only on like two sips of the Rockstar this morning, so I'm feeling good to go now. Okay. Listen, it's because Kyle is one of the better looking guys on the tour that you prepared for, prepared for him this morning? No, my wife's away, so I'm actually getting some sleep. <laughs> 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 well, firstly, Arthur, wife away, getting a haircut, it's not really corresponding with sleep. It's more <laughs> like I'm going to get some time with my... Dogs. <laughs> 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 my dogs also are away. So I'm home alone. Also gone. Yeah. Where's the family? They actually gone to visit other family because I'm doing some renovations at the house. So okay. I've chased them away. Nice. Um, so what are you building a putting green? I wish. <laughs> that would be no, doing some waterproofing at the moment. Good time to do it in winter. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So I've had some two, two nights of good sleep. So I'm feeling good. Um, but it is a bit strange uh, going home to an empty house and it's, you just hear the crickets in the background and don't know what to do with yourself. No there. babies crying. No babies crying, no dogs to say hello to, baby to say hello to. <laughs> but um, yeah, a couple more days and they're back and back to reality, eh, to no sleep. No. Listen, Arthur, before we get into to Carl, yeah. Yes, it feels like it's my interview, Ted. Let's yeah. go. Wow, this is the Arthur <laughs> show. It's, what? It's, it's been <laughs> quite a few exciting weeks for us on the show. Eh? It has been very, very cool, eh? And I think there's also not just um, in the last couple of episodes, I'm very excited for the episodes to release, but also what's coming as well. Yeah, but it's just incredible. I mean, we, we all of a sudden have big brands that want to engage with us, mm. you know. And and also, we are crossing the bridge from your traditional just players to sports people within that also plays golf. Oh, mm. it's great. I you mean, know, I've been watching your guys' show now for a while. And the people you've got on are so influential and just great people. Mm. And uh, I've learned a lot actually watching your guys' podcast. So. I got yeah. you, you. You really humbled me humbled by what you said to me the other day so you listen to the show and you've actually learned things from what we say and you, and you say you also you listen to the the voice part of it in the car yeah i'll, I'll play the videos on youtube and then i just listen to it um, while i'm driving it's, it's brilliant oh, i'm so glad yeah, yeah. Do, you no, also, well do you also agree with me that albert talks too much and he doesn't let me talk enough um no, a good look. <laughs> sometimes, 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 but not all the time. Albert. Yeah, I, I, I have been, you know, I, I don't think we can be more critical on ourselves than other people are. No, 100%. But I'm, I'm certainly aware of it. Um, and, and just like Mornay, uh, you know, told me to do better intros, because I always just assume everybody knows who we're speaking to. 100%. But we're getting better. And that's, um, and that's for everybody that's watching, you know, it's still a passion project of ours. And, and I think we're getting better. And hopefully oh, that was we a can great just intro. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. But listen, Carl's also the nicest guy on tour yeah. as an individual, as a human being. So he's also going to tell you some nice things about yourself today that <laughs> you don't get offered. Yeah, that hat is looking beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, black and red, tiger-esque. Um, 
ready for look like you're ready to make loads of birdies today. Well, when I see your beautiful Titus bag, which you've got a really nice bag. Yes, thank you, Titus. Um, I have to represent your 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 partners. So hence we've got the caps on today. No, thank you. That's that means a lot. So Carl, so Summa take us a little bit from where this all started and how you ended up with golf. Okay, so yeah, I grew up, my dad uh, and I used to watch golf every Saturday and Sunday. I used to lie on the couch with him and and watch golf. And then um, used to, you know, on the weekends we'd go play golf. And that was fun until about the age of 12. Um, my main sport was actually cricket. Okay. And you look like a, lot. a spinner, yeah. No, not a spinner, boy. Not. What was your strength there? Uh, I was actually all rounder, but fielding okay. was like my main. I used to play point. Uh, point position so I used to dive catches and everything um, it was great fun but only up until the age of 12 and then I went for the Gauteng uh, team trials and didn't make it and then was wondering why I didn't make it and my dad told me other reasons why and yeah I threw my cricket bag in the back of the car and I said that's that I'm, I'm done with that and driving on the way home my dad said uh, so what are you going to do now boy? I mean we know you want to play sport I said dad I want to play golf individual sport and I feel like you know I can really do that then a few months later I was sent to a golf school down in George uh, the Kanaka Golf Academy uh, Roger Vessels was my coach there he was he was very good I was there for t- uh, one and a half years then came back started homeschooling um, hooked up with my coach that I'm still with now today Neil Cheatham so I've been with him now for 10 years and Great. um yeah, the journey has just been crazy since then. But Carl, so um, what on that day, um, what did your dad say to you? What went wrong when you did the provincial? No, I, 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 made th- I scored 36 runs and took yeah. three wickets and wasn't chosen for the side. And I was, I was a bit confused, you know, and I don't know why. But yeah, I just, I was over it after that. Um, then, yeah, I went to my second love, which was golf the time my second love now obviously it's my life yeah um who's your first love uh savannah her name's savannah <laughs> she's my fiance about to get married on the 20th of december <laughs> um but jana that's that's what happened that day and then since that day i've chosen golf and that's that yeah but you also see in in team sports like you can be an out like um you can stand out and if your team's not performing it does hinder the selection process and there's also a lot of politics when it comes to team selection and provincial selections i mean i'm not trying to be nasty but you know this player's dad is friends with the coach or the selector um and there's biasness to it and i was also very similar i think at the age of like 13 14 i just focused on individual sports so tennis and golf yeah so i wanted to put the ball in my court and be in control of things like which i think is a great decision team sports are brutal sport eh? yeah because it's, it's you got to rely on the whole team to perform and if someone else doesn't do what they need to do like in football it hinders you your can have a uh, the defender and goalkeeper can have a nightmare you know the team's not going to win yeah you know and you could be really good on paper but um yeah, team sports is quite brutal yeah, that's a fair sport. That's a fair comment, uh, because in golf, whether you the most liked person, you know, or whether you have the greatest personality, mm-hmm. your golf will dictate. Oh, your score will dictate. Will dictate yeah. what happens around it. 100%. What sponsorships gets involved. What um, access you get to other tours and etc. Exemptions yeah. and etc. I mean. That's a very fair point that from a team sport to individual sport, you sort of just control that. And obviously there's a big support team around that. Eh? Mm. But I hear what you're saying there. And it's probably why it's not the first time we hear a team sport becoming, I'm focusing more as an individual on it. Yeah. But what has changed in the last 10 months? Because all of a sudden you're accelerating yeah. at an extremely fast pace. Was yeah. it because you came for a fitting with me at TrueFit and you got all the information? Definitely that. Definitely, <laughs> <little wrong. laughs> definitely Arthur. I'm teasing. Um, no. But because you turned pro, sorry, in 2016. Yes, ne? October of 2016. Of 2016. Yeah. So it's certainly not overnight success. 
Uh, definitely not. Jeez, I've climbed every single step of the ladder that you could possibly think of. I mean, I don't play much amateur golf. Um, I played a lot of junior golf and then made all the sides for IPT for Central Gauteng, which was amazing um, for me. That was a good achievement at the time. And um, yeah, then I decided to turn professional at the age of 18. And the, you know, the golf RSA and um, SA Golf didn't really agree with what I was, my uh, decision, but they, they said I could go ahead, ahead with it at the time. And then just played IGT and Big Easy Golf for three years. And just I to found, get that experience. Jeez. I mean, I was playing almost week in and week out every week and it was such a good breeding ground for where I am now, you know, and I feel like if I didn't have that foundation of professional golf, you know, I need to make this putt um, so I can play next week and, you know, those sort of pressures. Um, yeah, I don't think I'd be where I am today. So in your opinion, so in 2016, you were only 18 years old. I was 18 years yeah, old. Yeah, because you're 25 at the moment now. Yeah, 25. Holy moly, we, we, we always forget how young you still are. Yeah. And what was the reservations to turn pro? I mean, I understand from an uh, industry body perspective, and it's, forgive me just to divert you, but Ulrich Portgitter just announced this morning, he's turning professional. Oh, that's brilliant. You know, what a player. Portgitter, he got the exemption on the tour, um, and this morning he announced, you know, which I'm assuming wasn't part of his plans, yeah. but what would be the hesitation? What was the hesitation in that time? So I played, like I said, all the IPTs, um, and then try to work my way up the, the amateur ranks in South Africa. But I just felt like I wasn't, I was getting nowhere. And I was just hovering like 25 on the order of merit to like 30 on the order of merit um, in the amateur ranks. And I found the more I played, the more it was actually, with the whole ranking system, how it worked. I didn't really understand. I just played more and more and played as much as I could. Whereas actually, sometimes you actually shouldn't play this tournament because last year you finished sixth. And now if you play it this year and you finish worse than six, you lose your points. You lose points. And I was like, how does that work? So I was like, no, stuff this. I want to, you know, the amount of money that I make is where I want to be sitting on the order of merit. So the more you play, the more money you earn, you're going to be on top. Yeah. So the world golf rankings is very similar to that. Yeah. Um, if you, let's finish top five in the British Open and then next year you miss your cut boom, you're going to drop big ranking points because it's also a very similar Yeah, they use devices and yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah. of stuff. Um, so I just wanted, you know, local order of merits, the amount of money you earn is where you should be on the order of merit. Mm. And the order of merit, just from a professional player's perspective, how does that work? So the more, obviously, the more cuts you make, um, the more money you earn, and then you, you climb the ranks. Well, now they've changed to po a point system. Okay which I think actually is going to help us a lot because it was quite top-heavy um, with all the, the co-sanctions, you know. Okay. The guy would win a co-sanction, only play one or two events, and now all of a sudden he's on the, he's on the top of the order of merit. Whereas, you know, some a guys... Guy, a guy could win five events during the season on the Sunshine event and not really climb so much. Yeah, he could win like five Vodacom Origins events and then only make five, six hundred points or seven hundred points and then over 700,000 rand, and then a guy would come and win 4 million bucks, and now he's like way ahead of you in one, from one tournament. Um, so the point system, just give me an idea how that works. So I think they've just created a point system to make it less top-heavy with the co-sanctions. Okay. And I, I think you win, so like when I won the, the, the Stella Artois, I got X amount of money, but the points were more than the money okay. to try and balance it out. Okay. So I think that's so. That's but what so done. in a nutshell, previous seasons the order of merit was just money um, based the on. The only on indicator was money. M was money. Okay. <coughs> so if you made an X amount of money, you would climb. Now they've made it a lot more simpler, where no matter if you go to session and play a, a Vodacom Origins event or you play the Joburg Open, yes, obviously Joburg Open will have more points. More points. But you can actually based on a good season, you can have a good season in winter and a poor summer, then at least you still climb the ladder in winter. Yeah, you won't fall off you as heavy. You won't heavily. fall off as heavy because in the past it was all about summer. 
You're yeah. not playing the summer events, you're moving backwards because yeah. everyone's just running past you the whole time. Yeah. So I think it's fair. It's 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 definitely a fair structure, to be honest. 100%. But it's obviously a moving target, and, and clearly by some changes in the last year, it's it's amazing, but, you know, no judgment on it that we're all still learning mm. because the tour obviously is learning as they still go along. Yeah. And also in the last three years, I mean, call it two years especially, there's been a lot of change in golf. Yes, no, the Sunshine Tour especially. I mean, I mean the Sunshine Tour especially. What I mean, Thomas and his team yeah, have done is, yeah. is unbelievable for us players. You know, like I, I mean, said to you earlier, I had the one of the tour marketing managers here this week. Um, in fact, yesterday, um, and he was just. We were just going through some of the changes that that Thomas has brought in, and it's just been amazing. Mm. But there's also politics, like in anything, you know. There's politics involved. But is there any indication as to how the PGA lift to a um, uh, a merger is going to affect the Sunshine Tour? Uh, so we don't know as okay. yet okay. Um, exactly what the changes are going to be. Because um, I'm assuming, sorry, the co-sanctioned tours will be no, no. possibly affected? No, I, d I don't. Well, this, this is my opinion and I haven't done enough research. But the merger is between the US PGA and LIV. So I would say Sunshine Tours merger tour is the European and Challenge Tour. Okay. So I don't know. I can't see how it's going to affect the Sunshine Tour personally. Okay. Um, I could be totally wrong and I don't think there's enough information out there currently because it's still new information. Yeah. Um, but I can't see it affecting the European tour and Sunshine tour on the merge. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> if that makes sense. And just going back, sorry, one step back to the new point system. I think it's also quite nice for the pros. Like if you go into the order of merit, it's all points based. Previously, it was all money based. So now every week I can watch Kyle and see, oh, well, this oak's balling. He's yeah. just made a million rand in the last two weeks. <laughs> you know, so people are, 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 are nosy when it comes to, thing, uh, to, yeah. to yeah, those yeah. things. So that protection of, yes, you could, if you do enough research, you could find out how much they're winning anyway. Yes. But I think that's also really, really nice because it's all based on points. It's not about how much money they've earned. And they've almost protected that person on seeing how much money they're earning. Yeah, because people are all money driven. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I didn't think about it that way actually. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, hundred percent. So you go look in the past when Dardy von Tonda was just going crazy, and then all of a sudden he's four million rand richer. I literally click four buttons and I can see how much it is. Now, yeah. it's not the case, which I think that protection is. I don't know if that's the right word, but that protection is quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not like you can go click four buttons and see what my salary is. But does it, forgive me, you know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> does it stop? Um, it also then takes players so they don't select too much, selective playing. Yeah. Because then they just go for the big, you know, the big, the big wins and the big co sanctioned. They also are incentivized to play on, on, on a lot of the tours. Yeah, 100%. So, like, for example, we can use. First person that comes into mind, like a Jacques Kreisvake, for example, who plays on the European Tour. Now, if he has a four-week break, not traveling to Europe, he might want to play one or two yeah. smaller events yeah. on the Sunshine yeah. Tour because it's on point system yeah, yeah, yeah. to build his ranking on the Sunshine <coughs> Tour. If it was all just money-based yeah. and it's smaller events, he's not even going to move much anyway. Um, yeah. Playing those events, he might as well just practice and have his off time. So that's... So that yeah. So I think it's definitely incentivizing, I would say, guys that are playing abroad to come back and play a little bit more as well. 100%. We've seen that. We've yeah. definitely seen that. More players are coming back playing the smaller events and it's nice to have them because mm. for our world ranking points as well, it 100%. increases you know, the field strength and all of that. Because the point system is connected to the other tours as well. So, so let, me, let me interrupt you. So basically, if... Who's a good example? So if Dean Bermius does rank 60 in the world and he comes and plays the Kit Kat Pro-Am and he's 60 in the world, all of a sudden the world ranking points for that event is way bigger than if he didn't play. Yeah. Okay? Like okay. So on for example, when Eric was top 50 on the order of merit and he played SA Open, Open or the Ned Bank, everyone is happy that he's playing. Not because they want to see him and say, well, hello, what's the yeah. uh, lacquer? It's because it benefits their world ranking points. 
Okay. Yeah, you make the cut or you finish top 10. Yeah. You're, you're, you get more world ranking points and you climb, you know, obviously the world order of merit. And is the pointing system a quite an easy thing to understand? No, I, d- I still don't understand it. From my understanding is, obviously there's point structure on how strong the field is. That's why all the majors are strong because it's got <coughs> the top 70 players in the world yeah. and, and, and. Um, but you gain your points based on strength of field and size of points is on strength on field and obviously based on performance, you get more ranking points based on that. And then obviously if you play that same event next year, in order to gain points from the previous season to actually have that positive deficit, then you would have to improve last year's performance. If you are worse than the performance, you lose last year's ranking points. It comes off. Okay. So in, in English, to explain it, on H&A, you have your yeah. 20 rounds. Yeah. I, d- I don't know how it works on what the number is, but let's say it's 8 or 9 or 10. And let's say 9 was your 68 and you're a 2 handicap. Now, the minute you get to 10 and that 68, 10 rounds played and that 68 falls out, all of a sudden you might go from a 2 to a 3 or a 4 because that good score has been removed. Okay. It's very similar to that structure in, cur- in terms of world yeah. ranking points. I mean, to put it into this perspective, this is crazy. I mean, won the Stella uh, Players Championship. I got 2.7 points for winning, okay? Wyndham Clark, they just won the US Open. Got a hundred points. So that means I'd have to win like thirty-three, like, yeah. Yeah. thirty-three players Stella Artois yeah. to get a hundred points. I mean, that's that's Just mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone will do that. So, yeah, obviously, um, and we had a pretty strong field. We had like five or six players within the top three hundred in the world, which is not bad yeah. in the Stella Artois. Yeah, just so, just. Tristan Lawrence played. Tristan Lawrence, Jaco Alice, mm. um, a few other guys, yeah. Mm. It was a decent Dylan field. Mostert, Casey Jarvis. All your mates. All my mates. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's also something. Yeah, Casey's special, eh? Special, uh, I so mean. So how's this? We travelled together the whole of last season and I didn't beat him in one tournament. And the only tournament I beat him was the Stella Tour, and he finished second. So the only way I can theoretically beat him is to win the golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, I saw oh, he, 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 he was the runner-up. Eh? Yeah. But yeah. I think this is a good time to discuss, I don't know what that time period is, but obviously Dylan will, winning Yeah. Um, was, obviously you could see on TV how special it was for you guys. Yeah. Casey's been knocking on the door a couple of times and you guys have been there and then you. So And Herman Lopesha as well. Herman Lopesha, Herman Lopesha as well. He was the yeah. first one to yeah. win. So he got yeah. his card back at qualifying school at, um, where's what's that course they play there? <sighs> Somewhere Heron there Banks. by the Vol, Heron Banks. Yeah, yeah, tough course apparently. So Herman got his card two weeks before the first event last season. Um, the first event was at Arabella. Herman wins. First guy in our friend group to win, and we were traveling together, and everything was lovely. And that obviously drove all of us to be like, "Wow, this is, you know, it's doable Possible. now. We can yeah. definitely do this." Yeah. And then Dole was the next one to win a few weeks later, the Kit Kat. And then obviously he won again um, at the Nelson Mandela, Mandela yeah. um, the Challenge Tour event at Humewood. And yeah, obviously then I felt like. I had to do it. Mm. <laughs> you know, it can't be falling can't far be behind. Can't be the fourth leg, yeah. yeah. So um, Casey I, must feel left out at the moment. But no, he does. All respect to Casey. He's having a very, very good season. Oh, he's very doing. Good he's season. one of the best players I've played yeah. with. And, um, and why is that? Do you, funny. Th- do you think? Do you think it's because he he's so aggressive when he uh, when he when he goes for his iron shots towards the green? He's got almost like zero. Um, he he doesn't have fear. He fear, plays with no right fear. Word. Yeah. yeah. Um, just probably the most confident player I've ever played with. I mean, I played the first two rounds with him at the Limpopo Championships um, beginning of this year. And we're on the ninth hole of our second day. Um, it was a long par five. It was actually the 18th hole, but our ninth hole. And he it's so long. You can't reach it in two. But he goes, driver, three wood. He's still got like 70, 70 meters to the flag. Hits it to like five foot from the hole. Straight up the hill, five foot. Walks up there and he's like... Guys, I want to tap this in. I want to just tap it in quick from five foot. Okay, so his caddy takes out the flag. He doesn't mark it, clean the ball, nothing. There's still mud on the ball and just taps it in. 
goes in for birdie. I mean, that's that's how crazy that oak is. He's a bit of He's a just got no fear, and when he feels like he wants to do something on the course, he'll just do it, and and most of the time it pays off. Um, and I think I think that goes. Yeah, he's brilliant. To, I think that goes to certain personality, especially for Casey. And you could answer this really, really well. If he had to sit for two and a half, three minutes, wait for the other guys to play out, he's probably gonna, he knows he's going to miss the putt because he's probably yeah. going to think about it for so long. And then he's going to overread it, and am I going to make it <laughs> yeah. or not? Right now, his 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 thinking is okay. Let me just tap it in, get my birdie. Let's let's just get it done. Yeah, Casey's definitely not an overthinker. He, in, in, if anything, he doesn't think at all. Okay, he just looks and hits. <laughs> no, he's brilliant. Which is I a look good, up to him for that. Which is a good positive. Yeah, I've definitely taken some aspects out of his game. Um, and created in my own way to play with less fear. And, yeah, he's helped me a lot. Yeah, I look great. up to him, even though he's 19 years old, and yeah. I'm 25, you know, I, I respect the way he plays. It's brilliant. Um, but also a funny story. So after I won the Players' Championship, um, obviously we were celebrating in the clubhouse afterwards, and myself, Dylan Morstead, Herman Lopesha, and Casey Jarvis, we took a picture like this. And while we were posing for the picture... Um, Herman tunes uh, three winners and a. <laughs> 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 that is funny. Oh, that is brilliant. Like he's still gonna win a lot, eh? Oh, okay, he's, he's definitely. He's gonna win a lot. He's gonna win something big. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely prone, and the way that everybody's writing about him, that's he's gonna be. He knocked on the door at Houghton, eh? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, he's knocked on the what, door. That was the Joburg Joburg Open. Joburg Open. He Joburg was Joburg. knocking on the door, eh? Yeah. Yeah. The other but guys just played ridiculously well. Yeah, you're talking, you about the really last, you're talking about the last one. The recent Joburg yeah, 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 yeah. They just literally didn't make mistakes and they just fired. I mean, Casey had a good opportunity there, but the other guys just played really good at the end of the day on the last day. Yeah, that was impressive. Yeah. So, so just take me through the last 10 months. What has changed? Is there something you can pinpoint to? Definitely. Definitely. A, a lot has changed in my life in the last two years. Um, so after COVID and that, I was really struggling with my, with my game and was missing cuts and just wasn't happy. Um, and then we, uh, my family moved from Midrand back to our old house in, uh, in Rudderport area. And then, yeah, my parents decided to separate and that was like a changing point for me. I had to, then I decided to move out of the house, uh, moved in with Savannah. So now we've been living together for the last two years. But uh, she's really helped me a lot um, to get to where I am now today. Um, then a, f a couple months after that, we played the SAO. Per a couple months after my parents separated, I moved out. Um, we went to go play the SAO Open at, uh, at Sun City. It was that time when COVID was still crazy. Not a lot of the European tour guys played. And uh, Savannah introduced me to Gavin Groves. She knew him from a while back and whatever. Um, but she introduced me to him and sure, he's, he's helped me a lot, um, with the whole training and just getting in the gym and getting fitter and golf fit, you know, and, and getting my body, uh, prepared for tournaments. Um, that's been a big change point. Um, and then, yeah, I've implemented a lot of other things on the golf course and off the course, um, course management strategies. Um, using Decade, which is a great course management strategy that I can honestly st say that I haven't hit a shot in the last year and a bit without using that strategy, even in fun rounds. And what is, is that a, a program or what? Yeah, it's a program. So you use it for stats. Is it a strokes gain program? Yeah, you, you can base it against strokes gain, PJ tour, different tours. Um, but it's, it's mostly a course management strategy. Okay. So you hit a lot of balls on the range and you find out your dispersions um, and then you, you compute it into the system and then it, it comes up. You can search any golf course on the app and it, it, it'll come up uh, uh, Google, Google Earth images yeah. and then it comes up with your lines, your distances and your dispersions and you can drag your lines f off the tee to see you, which is the best line. So if you push it or pull it, you're not getting into trouble. Um, that is so impressive. That is so cool. know, what's that, what is this unreal. called, the software? It's called Decade Golf. Don't is it an international app? How do you spell that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an American Like Decade, system. like New Decade. Oh, Decade. Decade. Okay, so sorry. This, they call it Decade because not only is it an acronym for a few things, it's a whole system. 
but um it's also uh, they they claim that it'll shave decades off of your golf experience <laughs> because it's teaching you how to play golf correctly, okay. mathematically correct. It's it's really interesting. Uh, but where it help where it's helped me most is uh, with approach shots. Do you know anyone? Let's call it in the top hundred that use it. Uh, do they do they market yeah, it like Bryson that? Yeah, Bryson DeChambeau, Colin Morikawa, okay. Will Zalatoris. So Will Zalatoris was actually like so the, the younger generation. Pick. Yeah. The younger generation, um, Robert oh, well, McIntyre. Go, go try get Ernie Elson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I think nice. Robert McIntyre, you know, the lefty. Yes, yeah. yeah, great European tour player. Um, he uh, he won a tournament like last year sometime, and the week before he won, he started using this decade strategy, and he said literally he wouldn't have won if he didn't use a strategy. That is so and, and that strategy is in in preparation for the course now. Yes. Yeah, so basically, yeah. all the work gets put in in your practice rounds. Yeah. You get your lines off the tees, <coughs> excuse me, and you get your, your numbers around the greens and everything um, for your approach shot targets. And then, yeah, then you just free flow in the tournament. So all the, all the hard work is put in. So you're using in the app rounds. in the practice round? Yeah, I'm using the app in the practice round uh, to get my lines off the tees. And then also around the greens and that. So it, it gets a bit complicated around the greens. Does it incorporate trees? Yeah, it incorporates trees, hazards, bunkers, any, th- all okay. of that. Just like that's really incredible. And you know what I loved about what you just said there is that you actually understand what was changed in the last two years in order to get to this point. Yes, and there's, there's obviously another thing. So there's probably three things that I've changed. Um, is the work that I've been putting off the course with my coach Neil Cheatham. Yeah, um, we've implement <coughs> implemented a lot of systems now, maintenance drills that we do that I do after every single round, after every practice um, session, where I've got basically two different swings. I've got a core swing during tournament, and then I've got a maintenance swing, which basically just clears out all the the problems that, that creep in. Just hoist Q20 on the rust a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Yeah. G- give so us an idea on the, on the, on the two different <coughs> swings. What's different? So it's basically setup stuff. So okay. on the course, my... Well, my natural grip and everything is very strong. Okay. I get quite a bit of sh- uh, forward lean with the shaft. My weight tends to get a bit on the left side um, during the swing. Um, so the, the maintenance swing after every day, after every round, is just basically getting into a perfect neutral position. Um, you know, a setup, so just neutral neutralizing. Setup. So he's not moving. So if he's strong, he's not moving to stronger. He's almost just main t- ma- ma- making sure that, that he's not going stronger in the grip. I'm just using the grip yeah. as an example. Yes. Yeah. So he's not moving too because he's already strong. Yeah. If he goes any stronger, <laughs> there's problems. Correct. So we're trying to work within perimeters of trying to stay consistent and find a way that over time, the maintenance stuff will slowly creep into the Correct. golf course stuff. And then that's that's what I've changed as well. So we've got a, a swing maintenance, then we've got a short game maintenance and a putting now today. I went to go um, this morning, work with Neil um, on some putting maintenance drills and try quantify ways to, to get better with the putting as well. So that, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's not fluke why I've been playing well, but I've definitely changed things and seen the, you know, the fruits of the hard labor. But you had to go through what you go through in order to realize what needs to 100%. change next. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's not just an overnight decision. It comes with experience and failures mm. give you that experience. 100%. So do you, do you guys as a team sat down and said, listen, we need to change things up because of your low that you came down from? Or is it more management driven? Management being your, your <coughs> coaches, uh, like a Gavin Groves. Who, who decides this? So I think I decide, okay. you know, seeing as I'm the boss of my career and that. Yeah. Um, also, obviously, moving out and starting to live, you know, independently now, not depending on yeah. my parents anymore, um, has really, I've grown up a lot in the last two years. Okay. You know, learning how to do washing, dishes, um, cook, you know, open <laughs> curtains, close curtains. Make the bed. Make the bed. Do the cat litter. Make sure they have food and water. I mean, that stuff's hard, you know? That stuff's <laughs> big, buddy. That stuff we just take for granted That's when we're living with our correct. parents and living with, correct. you know? Yeah. So that, just little things like that. I've also, I've grown up a lot. Um, yeah, without Savannah, I wouldn't have 
been able to do that, you know? So. And then you've missed one thing that I'm curious about. So you've mentioned, you know, the structures you've implemented and stuff with uh, physical and technique. What are you doing mentally? Mentally, I've I've just started working with Theo Bethesda Note okay. a couple of months ago. It was actually a, <clears throat> our first session was the week before the Stella Tour. Funny enough, Players Championship. So, I mean, Theo says it normally takes a few months for his uh, clients <laughs> to start winning, but he said it was just an anomaly that I, it took me one week <laughs> after our first session with him. But do you think he's taught you things that he knew, or that you knew, or I, I mean, surely you had a decent baseline. I had a decent baseline with routines and processes on the course, but they weren't as. Um, how can I structured. say as structured as precise as you know Theo has taught me now? I mean, we we're going so in depth that there's a there's a system for my caddy now. He needs to know where to put the golf bag while I'm hitting a shot. It needs to be three meters behind the ball and two meters to the right, you know, so that I can stand behind the ball with my bag, visualize the shot, get the club, so that everything is so precise. He almost not. You're not impl- uh, you're not influencing your routine yes. or taking longer to decide on getting the club. Correct. If your Everything bag's further away, yeah. you're taking more time. And the Everything's long- the same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about how many times you stand over the ball and you feel like, oh, this might not be the right club. Yeah. And but your caddy is like five meters away, and I have to walk to him, mm. get the club out, go back, and then I'll start again. Your routine's messed. Yeah. Now your routine's messed. You might be overthinking. So there's a precise place even where the caddy needs to put the bag so that he's in the right position in case, you know, there's indeci- indecision. Or it's almost like a stupid example. Like I played Kyle Army yesterday. Um, oh, a little bit of a warm-up round before tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, lacquer. Yeah. Uh, so basically a decade course management. You want to know something interesting? I should <laughs> level par. First round in two months, and I didn't hit a fairway on the front nine. <laughs> Jeez, like, <laughs> we're using the leather wedge or what? Uh, no, 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 bro. I pulled myself a, a Ricky Fowler <coughs> replica putter, like a long putter oh, with sick. a long grip. Oh, is it one of those? Uh, yeah, Counterbalance. 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 Yeah. Dude, try beat me a ten foot or closer. No chance. <laughs> okay, but it's not about me. <laughs> but um, you know how many times. I drive the cart like let's say next to the green and then I've got a bunker shop so I get a lob wedge and then I get in there and there's no sand. Now I need to walk all the way to the car to get something with you yeah, know, with, more with bounce. More bounce, yeah. To and that's just such a loss. Yeah. And you're almost like irritated now yeah, with yeah, yourself. Yeah. I've got to walk an yeah. extra twenty. Or you feel meters. too lazy and you play the shot with your sixty degree and you gum it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think well, that's amateurs just go listen, ask, you know what? listen, well that I think that's an amateur move. Luckily, I've got a little bit of experience <laughs> with that, yeah. so I'll rather, um, you know, that competitive edge in me is still there. So, like, I don't want to go hit a c- bunker shot, for example. Who did you play with? Um, <coughs> Rob Westray and Bryden. Oh, okay, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, pro shop. It's Ian Everly from yeah. Zuno's yeah. um, Farewell. He's moving to Dubai. Laka. So... So, to so that's just, yeah, I got so distracted there yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. but that's, no, that's that, it's, no, it's, it, it does sense. work. You have to have the right club and the bag right next to you. Yeah. So. L- listen, I mean, course management is, y- y- you know, I mean, I would say amateurs need to take that far more seriously because when it comes to amateurs, course management really, really starts to uh, play a massive role in your strokes. And I honestly, there's just no doubt. About I honestly that. think For professionals, I would assume it's fine tuning. Yeah. You know, where, where, where with an amateur can literally change that bogey into a possible birdie putt. 100%. If he just changes the basics and, and take the ego, you know, out if of I've it. got any advice for amateur golfers is to not go for flags. Yeah. Unless the flag is in the middle of the middle of the green. Yeah. Always go towards the fat side of the green because now you, you're changing your dispersion to, you know, on the green. Instead of going at the green, let's say it's a tucked left flag, now half of your dispersion is short-sided to the left. There could be a bunker there, there could be hazard, hazard. there, could there be could rough. be long grass, it's rough. Yeah. I mean, it's a basically a 50-50 chance of making a double for an amateur. Whereas if he just had to aim middle of the green, 
and it's a tuck left flag. If he pulls it a bit, yeah. if he if he hits his left side of the dispersion, he's going to be towards the flag. If he hits the right side of his dispersion, he's going to have all the green to work with now and might have a much easier an up and down. Well, he will have a much easier up and down. And to simplify chance. that, it's pretty simple. You, when you're on the golf course and you see the flag, you get a red flag, an orange flag, and a green flag. So a red flag is a flag you shouldn't go, even as a professional golfer, you shouldn't go for. The back. For, let's say it's back left yeah. or front left, but there's hazard front. You're not going to go for that flag if you've got short side water. Um, you're going to go for middle of the green. Yeah. Um, so for amateur golfers, it's pretty simple. If you can determine what a red, orange, and green flag is, so green flags, middle of the green, you can go for it. Because if you pull it slightly, push it slightly, still you're still probably going to be on the green. Mm. If you can just get those basics right, you'll drop like four or five shots around because people just see flag and even subconsciously they just want to go for the 100%, flag. 100% because they think that's the, that's the target. That's the target. target. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very good point. I'm glad you guys brought that up because I you know, obviously play also with a lot with amateurs. That's all they do is go for the flag. You know, if I just look at their aiming, so forget in their mind perhaps that they've made the decision to go for the flag. Yeah. I look at their start. I look at their aim. Their alignment. and Their the alignment is... Probably straight at the flag. You know, and, the, and in their mind, they might be hoping, okay, I faded a bit to the right, so maybe it ends right of the green, or maybe I pull it a little bit and it ends left of the green. Yeah. But if you set your target more towards the center, you'll have a far better chance to get that good bounce. And it's even 100%. simple as this. How many amateur golfers? And are we talk. <laughs> it's Carl's episode. We're talking about amateurs. No, how many? Interesting. Interesting. This is interesting. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's so, teaching. how many amateur golfers? Let's say flag is back left, and they set up for middle of the green. Yeah. Okay. Just hear me out. But sub, not subconsciously, they're looking at the flag the whole time. So what is your brain going to do? Yeah. It's going to veer towards, towards the flag the because picture, you're not yeah. looking yeah. at your target. Yeah. You're looking at where your results should be, be. or yeah. you would want it to be. Yeah. So your subconscious is so strong, it's going to hoi those hands a little bit to get it subconsciously to the flag because the yeah. flag's back left. So changing your target and focusing in on the target is crucial. 100%. Yeah, but that also comes down and the guys are normally... You know, and I know, like Carl says, but he led he led into how amateurs can apply this mindset that you've got in the last two mm. years. It's that to start off with, amateurs aiming isn't very good. You know, and guys are even egos gets involved. They don't want to do that quick check with the club. You know, when you just put the club in front of your feet. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But or a a, stick. yeah, but a lot of amateurs don't want to <laughs> do that because it's like amateur hour. <laughs> you know, oh, you're just starting in golf. I have no problem with that. Just a baseline. And I do it about three or four times in a round. That's good. Where I just have a quick baseline. Am I still going right? And I mean, this Sunday, just to give you an idea, a very good player, 12 handicapper, his dispersion and aiming was between 80 and 110 meters out. <laughs> he needs a fitting. No, I'm, I'm, I'm completely <laughs> with you. But if you, you hear me out when I say, you look at where he's supposed to aim, yeah. I can clearly see his aiming. So... In, in, in the aiming, it feels like a couple of centimeters. But if you look at where the ball's going to end up, <laughs> that's 80 to 100 meters dispersion of where you think he's aiming. Hmm. Now, he needs a golf lesson. <laughs> he needs a golf lesson. Fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I just, tell him. Just to elaborate to that, I had a customer who was having a lesson on Wednesday. And at Copperleaf, the range wasn't busy, but there were a couple of people on the range. So I was just giving him a little pointers like drills. Yeah, you know, to drill in because she's just all over the place with the swing. And he said to me, I feel like the biggest idiot doing drills in front of people. I'm like, so that's where you come yeah, to amateur that's what hour. I mean. But that's what I mean. I'm like, okay, leave it. Might as well go home then. Yeah. Because if you're not going to drill something in, yeah. don't drill it with a driver or yeah, four, yeah, yeah. a four iron. Drill it yeah. with a nine iron or wedge yeah. to get the feeling. If you don't want to do that, then you might as well. Yeah. If you don't want to improve, then you might as well just stop the game. That's <laughs> a bit aggressive. No, but uh, I hear you. But continue but playing your 24, see, 18 handicap, whatever. Yeah, you see, that's the thing. Uh, so if you want to be committed towards, you know, see, I, I, maybe it's age, uh, but I just don't have that. I mean, I, you, you see the amateurs warm up and they even get mocked for that. You know, oh, you're warming up. Yeah, I'm just going to rock up to the first and I almost, smash I almost, it away. I almost gave Bryden. 
yesterday because he was the only guy on the four ball hitting balls in the Tell driving Brian range. Me and he can play golf because <laughs> I'm always the guy warming up and I'm there before the time warming up and he's like, oh, uh, look at me. And then I'm, not, I'm if I mess it up on the first, <laughs> oh, like, oh, oh, you see, oh, you see, the guy that warms up the most messes it up the most. I went straight onto the out of the fridge onto the first tee box, <laughs> but I've got mental demons I still need to deal with. The more I practice, the more my my head right. kicks out and I'm like, <laughs> now I want to start changing. It. <laughs> so anyway, but I think the last thing that I want to mention, advice to amateurs, is going back to the golf cart. How many amateurs pick a club based on what they think they need to play, get there and they have the wrong club? Right. Push a golf cart, take yeah. a caddy, so the caddy can actually be right there by you the whole yeah. time. And, and listen, cart golf is amazing. I love yeah. cart golf. Yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan. Yeah, it's like a because um, then you can still work in the evening Correct. and not sleep. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's also crucial. I mean, the amount of shots you lose based on having the wrong club, club based on visually what you think you need yeah. versus actually the right club that you need But that's also crucial. But that's why I, I amateurs, I like to put a bit of pressure on the game. And even if it's for 10 rand, you know, it's irrelevant because that's always amazing. The moment there's something to play mm. for, you go fetch that club. When it's a social Correct. round, you know what I mean? And you don't really care about your score... You know, you you to try and make that club. I work. don't even want to play golf if you're not even playing for a coach. Yeah, you got to really, play for You've got to play for something. Hundred percent. Oh, no absolutely. Point. I mean, there, there's no point. Yeah. And, and ego is already a big one to play for. You know, because that's a big, big one. Mm. But the ten rand or the beer or whatever it is afterwards, oh, it's just it tastes a, way better. Tastes way better. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pay for way it. better. But now your two years, you've done these dramatic changes, and very consciously you've made these changes. Yes. Obviously, based on history and learnings that you've done in the game. Yeah. But it tells you once again, 2016, you turned pro. I know it was the end of 2016. So it's still a journey to get to that point. So it tells you <clears throat> at 18, when you turned pro, you weren't experienced, yeah. but you felt physically right to do yeah. it. You know, And in your mind, maybe at that age, you felt more confident than perhaps you were. Yeah, also I felt like, you know, if professional golf is what I really want to do with my life, then why not start now Yeah, and work through the ranks? I mean... At that time, the IGT tour was still very prominent and was a great, great development tour yeah. at the time. And yeah, I mean, played probably 30 events a year on the IGT and Big Easy. And uh, yeah, so I, mean, I thought that more, was... More uh, events more than, events than yeah. Sunshine. So I thought that was a great time to turn professional and to, to learn to play, you know, as a pro. But it's... Did I, I cut you out there? No. No, not at all. It's it's also a bit of a nature of the beast at the moment. If you look at young sports people, if you go back twenty five years, rugby, cricket, golf, it really but didn't matter. They went to university. Yeah. Became doctors, lawyers, engineers, whatever their um, field of passion was. And then by the way, we also play sport. But now in the last fifteen, ten years, especially if you look at Formula One, cricket, tennis, they are turning pro far earlier. Yeah. Because I mean, there's even court cases of uh, the kid wanting the parents to give them the permission to turn pro where the parents are saying, no, you still need wow. to do university. I mean, there's physically court cases in sport, tennis, cricket, and golf, all three of them. But the parents the, don't want to... Don't want to turn that pro. yet because maybe they come from a generation of you have to have something as backup where yeah. the kid's saying, listen, I'm in my peak performance time. And I know it depends on the sport and golf is a little bit different than let's say Formula One or cricket or whatever it might be. But so I think it's not that it's not that unusual for somebody at your age and your type of generation to go. I need to turn pro. I'm ready for it. Yeah. But now you've done the conscious decision. You've made some changes on your golf game. Um, consciously did so. Now it's all coming together for you. Yeah. Slowly but surely, and I'm hoping I can continue the the good form. But I know that if I if I do the work off the course that I'm supposed to and that I have been doing. Um, I know that I'll have less drop-offs and more consistency. Consistency, 100%. So we were just speaking about some details. The bag needs to be in a certain place with a caddy. How would a Casey Jarvis, based on what you've said to us, how does he approach it? He's just a complete freewheeler. He doesn't, I mean, he's just a joker as well. Yeah. I mean, at Limpopo, it was the funniest thing. Um, on the... The second tee box, he hooked his tee shot straight into the bush. Okay. 
got there, found his ball, hit it, hit it to the shore of the green, hit it on, made a five or whatever, and walked onto the next tee box. Looked at looked at me just before he was about to tee his ball up and gave me a wink. Teed his ball up, did his did his practice uh, swing and looked at the ball, and he looked at his caddy and he was like, Andres, this is not my ball. <laughs> and then he was like, No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, he did that in a tournament. And yeah. for me, that was, like, just so brilliant, yeah. you know, that he's actually so calm. And and he's not even worried, about, okay, I've just hit it left, left off the yeah. tee, no, what yeah. a bad yeah. swing. Yeah. Care, like, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't mean to bring Casey into your conversation, but it's that every player is different. Yeah. You know, your approach that you've had for the last two years, maybe in the structure, might not work for a player like yeah. Casey. Am I right in assuming that knowing what you know about professional golfers? Yeah, definitely. Everybody's 100%. a bit different. Everyone's different. I mean, so but what I've done is I've I've taken little things from my mates that I know they're very good at. Like Dylan's a very very structured person. Um, Herman likes to have fun, but he also works hard. And Casey's the the mess arounder. Yeah, but also works hard, but just has fun in between while he's doing it. And, and I doesn't almost, think too much. He doesn't think too much as well. So what I've done is I've taken little bits and pieces from them and other players around the world and, um, you know, try to make, make them my own, you know. So I've, I like to be structured with my processes, but then I like to have fun as well. So I do that at the same time and it frees me up on the course during tournaments to just go, you know what, if I duff this flop shot, I actually don't even care. And then it just always comes out perfect, you know. So the less you worry about it, the less you care about the result. Um, the more shots that you, the more shots you're going to hit that you're actually preparing to hit. I so want to know. Sorry, no? while while you're at that, when you chipped in at Euphoria to make the cut, <coughs> yeah, what was going through your mind, and did you know that was to make the cut or not? I knew that was to make the cut, and obviously I was playing with Casey. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That was an amazing moment. Yeah. So we had a little side bet. I don't know if we're allowed to do this while we're playing. Actually, but we Casey and I had a side bet. <laughs> Why aren't you allowed to? It's friendly. Um, so okay. we're walking down the 17th. There was a par par three, and I was two shots behind the cut. And um, I said, Casey, I'm going to make this cut, bro. I promise you, I'm going to make this cut. And he was like, I don't think you're going to make the cut. You're two shots behind. You need to finish birdie birdie. So on 17, I hit it to like 30 foot, just missed the birdie putt, tapped in for par. So now 18 is like the longest par five yeah. I've probably ever played. So now I need to make eagle to make the cut, and Casey knows that as well. So he's like, Kai, if you make this cut, I'll pay you 500 bucks. I'm like... What a cheap shit. I'm like, deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm like, deal, Casey, it's on. Boy. I, I will make eagle on this hole, and you will pay me 500 grand. So I driver, just short of the, the sleuth there, yeah. hit another driver off the deck, like probably the hardest swing with a driver, probably 125 mile an hour club at speed off the deck to about it was actually 37 meters to the flag and i walked up there did a great routine looked at my caddy uh conrad lopesha who's herman's little brother and i said boy i'm making this thing i will make this and in it went what an so incredible i basically moment. spoke it into existence and then and it was so cool our casey went, went crazy, crazy at the same yeah and time. then he paid me the 500 bucks so <laughs> <Okay>, good <laughs> it was worth it I'm glad he. I'm glad he doesn't owe you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's 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 and and you know, I never thought that we're going to go too much into the amateur, but this is the amateur show. You know mm. that we that we that we have the professionals here to also make it relatable, because yeah. you've just described your four ball, you know, or your players that you are very close to, yeah. could easily be a typical amateur four ball. We, the one guy's, you know. Parat. Parat. He, he's, that guy's shoes are polished before he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> then the second guy, on his way out to the car, he says, oh shit guys, I need to go back in quickly, I forgot my shoes. <laughs> and it's still full of the grass from the previous round. You get this in all golf, and it makes it so relatable to what you say now. Yeah. Um, and that's why we need to support these guys in viewership over the weekends. Because, yes... They are just like us, but just with a professional title. Definitely. But the camera is not going to show all the fun scenes all the time. You know, yeah. I know you guys do it in social media and your own posts and stuff. But the camera is always the your moments. Mm. 
you know. Um, it's it's the, every now and again they brush into a little bit of fun, but this is what's going on when we watching it. That there's always these um, um, fun between the players, yeah. you know, um, and 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 competition, which happens just in a normal amateur golf ball as well. Hundred percent. I mean, I hope the amateurs can relate to to us, and that's why the show is so great because it uh, you know brings it shows the professionals uh, you know who they are and people can relate to us and you know we're just normal human beings and yeah we also like to have fun we yes we work really hard and we do what we love but yeah we're just normal people and i hope you guys you know they can relate to us yes now carl you you are known on the tour as one of the nicest people ever and and i want to change nice to good people you know, you're such a good person. Thank you. Every interaction you've ever had with mates of mine, um, it's a it's a forever impression. Where does this come from that you are just this incredible person that everybody wants to be around? So it's not as easy as it looks. It's a lot of hard work. I put in a <laughs> lot of hard work to be a good person. Um, I truly believe in life, and this is my motto, is what you put in is what you get out. So the energy I put out into the world is truly, I can say this, the energy that I get back. I meet amazing people all the time. No one's ever horrible to me. Um, you know, just because of the energy that I put out. And that's the life that I've chose to live. And um, just like in golf, all the hard work I put into, into my game off the golf course, when I'm on the golf course, I let it just, come back to me the golf gives it back to me because of all the hard work i'm putting in off the course so i feel like it's a direct correlation between life being a good person and getting results on the golf course feels like it's it's brought towards me it's they it's given to me that's a really cool explanation yeah yeah and now tell me where you're still young you've obviously in the last year won more money than you ever had yeah what happens when that money hits your account? Is it, oh, I want to go buy all the stuff I've ever wanted, or does it go into responsibility, maintenance, make sure you've got reserves? What's yeah, the mindset? I mean, I've got to feed my cats. <laughs> you know, that's number one. <laughs> number two. How many, and how many f- cats do you have? I've got two. The one's oh, name's Dale, fucking, the other one's Hayes. That's too much in my opinion. You're joking. The one's Dale, the other one's Hayes. <laughs> You're joking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Dale Hayes. Yeah. Um, he's a great duck, but yeah. no, um, he's also close to you. Yeah, the yeah. names are Griffin and Tiny Man. Okay, Tiny um, Man. You've Tiny also got a wedding to pay for. Oh yeah, I got a wedding to pay for. I forgot about that. Where mm. are you having the wedding? Um, Clane Cop in Centurion. Oh, Cint- okay, yeah. that's awesome. You're Lovely doing it venue. locally. Lovely venue. So it's a great venue. I've that. actually been there before. Um, I've actually been there before. I think it was to an anniversary or something. Um, so now um, you're getting married. That's in December. Yeah, so that's, of December. that's the next phase for you and Savannah. Yeah, and yeah. what does Savannah do? She's an air hostess. A air hostess. Yeah, just like so. Your guys are travelers, quite all over the place. Yeah, we don't see each other much, but yeah. when we do, it's a great time. Okay, um, but she she worked for Qatar Airlines for three okay. years. Okay, and then COVID hit, and they had to let go of sixty percent of their staff and whatever. Yeah. And then she got lucky enough. A couple months after they let her go, she got a contract with uh, Airlink. Local, yes, local yeah, flight yeah, yeah. company, very good, um, and yeah. Now recently, she resigned from Airlink, and she's got a new com- a new job now with a private chartering company, um, that's based based out of London. Nice. The tips are going to be great on those ones. Yeah. So she's she's going to have a great time for the next couple of years. So she's going to base herself in London now. No, she's allowed to stay, stay here. Yeah, yeah. But they, they when they do the chartering, they fly. They fly yeah. her over there and then yeah. they, okay. they go yeah. from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. It, it is. Uh, that, that private charter world is, is a completely. The, the, it's irrelevant it's what private you get Private charter paid. and private yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, yachts is just. It's irrelevant yeah. what you get paid per hour or day. It's irrelevant. The, the tips, tips. The tips is what. <laughs> the tips is what you're after. Yeah. You know, when a guy's spending a million rand for a flight, you know, to, to throw $10,000 in there for him is just like small change it's ridiculous <laughs> I, I, I've seen those tips fly my, my brother-in-law works is an engineer on a yacht and they had Mariah Carey on the show no, no, on the show oh, on, on the, the boat. show on the boat and when he told me his tip I was like yeah 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 
You're joking. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it, per person. <laughs> <laughs> or sharing the pot, per person. <laughs> so I might need to ask Savannah for a sponsorship. You know? yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, so. I was just going to say, and hopefully she... Net she, jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she might just um, fly for one of the PGA boys anytime soon. Maybe. You take that money and put that onto the course. That will be wonderful. Jeez, that'll be great. <laughs> so listen, I, I want to ask you a question out of this. It's quite topical at the moment, but... Um, why are you not so the Sunshine Tour? Are you have you got any plans for PJ the Live merger? Is there any other plans for you outside of the Sunshine Tour? Or are you happy with where we are? Um, I'm definitely not going to settle where I, where I am at okay. the moment. I've got some big plans. Okay, um, leaving next week Thursday to play a British Open qualifier. Okay, um, so I mean that could be life changing if you really think about it. Life changing. Um, yeah, you know, I'm playing well at the moment. I've never played Lynx golf, so really looking okay. forward to that. Okay. Well, have you your, played, have you played fan court Lynx? Yeah, I have. I have. Okay, it's very. I mean, with, that's that's. It's, a, it's I know with it's your not ball, with your ball flight, you're going to be golden. You're going to be, be golden, golden buddy. Yeah, and your dynamic loft. <laughs> at yeah, I'll make sure that dynamic loft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is, uh, yeah, is very strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shane, we really um, wish you well with that, man. Thank you. Yeah. So hoping to do well. Um, tee off on the fourth of July for the uh, pre qualifier. Thirty six holes in one day, and then. Hopefully make it through and then play well at the British Open. It'll be a dream come true. I can just imagine. Because yeah. that's 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 what everybody wants. And then, yeah, obviously that's a short-term goal yes. at the moment. Um, but my long-term goals are more after the win and everything. Um, I'm into all the co-sanctional events for the next two years. Yeah. Um, Challenge Tour and DP World Tour with the Sunshine Tour. So... That's a huge opportunity for me. I've ne- it's my first time Having ever being that. into all those events. So I can really now work on my game and try and peak at the right time um, to play well in those events and try venture on to yeah. another tour. Yeah. Just like Carl, that's really exciting because <clears throat> having that exemption on the tours just gives you that freedom. stability. Yeah, that 100%. freedom. And I mean, you the know. opportunity that Sunshine Tour players have. Yeah just unbelievable yeah i mean i worked it out the next two years i'm, I'm getting into 20 co-sanctioned events with yeah. challenge tour and dp yeah so that's basically 20 chances to get onto another tour within the next two years yeah and that's that's huge for me if i can just continue doing the work that i have been doing i know that i'll peak at the right time so you play the golf side is obviously a big part of it but it seems to us from the outside perspective that you are also quite involved in growing the tour awareness from a player's perspective. They involved you in quite a few stuff in the social media, you know, take over the social media. What What is yeah. the deal there? So I'm a yes guy. Okay. Anyone asks me to do something, I'll do it. Okay. You know, except for drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, stay off that <laughs> shit. Stay off that, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, any bit of exposure for myself, my brand is is a very, it's a big thing. Yeah. Even if it's a little... 20-second um, video. 20-second video. Or a little uh, teaching lesson with, with some of the, the youngsters yeah. that yeah. come through yeah. um, on a practice round, you know, on the range. That little things like that really do go a long way. And the more people see your face, the more they hear your name, the, the better for you. So, yeah. you know, I'll do anything. Oh, well, that's good. And, and and I want to say you do it very authentically um, and very relatably. Uh, and Dylan also, uh, Dylan Naidu also does it exceptionally well. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Smart and intelligent, eh? So he was the guy that actually got me into the whole decade strategy. System. Oh, is it? I can imagine uh, it. That's him. all him. That makes sense. That makes... Com- oh, we, uh, you know, you sat here before. Yeah, yeah I that think makes he, I, I watched sense. his. Uh, I watched his podcast yeah. with you guys and he said that I owe him a, a few percent yeah, of yeah. my prize money for yeah. teaching, yeah, where for is him that? teaching me the... Can you cough up so we can send it to them? No, I'll please. give it to him in love. I'll pay him back with love. <laughs> 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 so, Carl, I think today's been so interesting. And uh, again, and, and that's what we... Uh, and I just want to... This is long format. But it's... We can go on for two hours with these you players. You know what I don't understand with Albert? Okay, in the beginning when we started this, we did research and preparation even with um, mike de jong yeah. i'll never forget this I'm trying to do research on mike de jong and we rock up and they everyone's sitting there and having lunch and i rock up and i'm running a little late and whatnot and i say albert i'm not even paying attention to the background and people <laughs> like albert 
I can't find information about Albert de Jong, uh, Mike, Mike de Jong. Jong. And he's sitting there right having lunch. He said, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In and, the meeting. And every bloody time he does preparation and he doesn't even talk about five five things on five your preparation. You need to learn and adapt. Uh, but but you know what? In roundabout ways. Quick fire. Yeah, in, 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 <laughs> in roundabout ways, we are getting to, to the stuff. No, I'm just teasing but we, you. But it is a matter for us. And, and also, that's why when we ask for feedback on the show, that you guys have to engage with us. Because, mm. yes, we're sitting here and, we're, and we've explained a little bit of to why we do this. But this is genuinely your show. Give us mm. where we make mistakes. I mean, we've had critical feedback. And it's, yeah, of course, like any human, it, you know, it gets you a little bit for a second. But then we adapt and we get better. Um, so we want the engagement to happen. And Carl, thank you that you are also an incredible supporter of us and the show. Um, and, and, and for everything that you do for golf. But I want to just quickly mention your sponsors. Because yes. there's obviously massive people behind you. Yes. Big people. But just take us through your sponsorship what does it look like at the moment? And your support team? Well, equipment-wise, yeah. obviously Titleist. Yes. They've, uh, you know, I've, they've hopped on board and given me a great opportunity um, for the next year to, to prove myself uh, for the brand. Okay. Um, amazing master fitters, Rudy Mertz and, uh, you know, Leonard Loxton and, and um, Stuart, you know, some great, great guys, part of the team. And, to be part of that is is just amazing in itself. It gives me confidence um, to become a better player and to and to prove everyone that you know I do deserve to to have one of the full line spots. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, clothing wise, handy um, Vietnamese brand actually very very good quality clothing. Very good. I mean, um, from a physical perspective, and it looks clean. Thank you very much. No, I must say the quality is fantastic. They don't have any more you know, joggers. These pants, eh? These pants feel like, you know, like a yeah. naked almost. Yeah. That's how light they are. Um, but yeah, they, they hopped on board a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago. And yeah, I'm glad to be re uh, representing their brand. Yeah. And that's it, Nay. That's it. Okay, great. You've mentioned your coaches. And um, thank you for what you do for Golf Carl. And, and like I said to you, I've, I feel like I'm shortchanging the, the listeners by, by cutting it off here. But we also understand um, everybody's time um, and normally an hour and 10 minutes is what our viewers enjoy watching. Yeah. But thank you so much for, mm. for today. Um, and, and thank you for taking the time to come here and good luck with the rest of today and, and, and especially with the plans for this year. Thank you. And we will specifically check in with you on the British uh, qualifier. Yes, please. W when is that exact date? 4th of July. 4th of July, 36 4th holes. of July, that's a famous number um, in, the, uh, in, in America. 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 Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just saying it's, everybody knows the 4th no, of July. No, but really thank you guys for, for letting me be part of the show. And, you know, I hope that this uh, gives someone else that's, that's watching a different perspective on golf and life. Um, if it's a youngster, elderly person, you know, if I can just change one person's perspective, that's, you know, that I've done my job. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, what a pleasure. Um, and I will say to you, Carl, it's like... Um I'll, I'll quote one of my mates, you know, when you, you being such a nice guy, he's like, he's good looking. He's a professional athlete that does very well. And now he's a nice guy. That shit shouldn't happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> one of them, he should be a doer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, he's a really good golfer, guys, but he's such a d And we all feel better. We're yeah. like, oh, thank God. Well, you know play against I mean? me for money on the course. I'll show you my <laughs> 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 I'll show you my I cannot, I cannot, not literally I cannot let this podcast Monet you need to especially know I cannot let this podcast go without telling the story which I know you might have heard already but when when one of my mates and he does a job a day 95 nothing toffee. To, yeah toffee he's got nothing to do with sport he sat here and he needed to go and do work you know like actual work a 95 work <laughs> Carl says to him should I help you with your work today? <laughs> <laughs> and he genuinely meant it. You know, that's like, imagine just sitting in a, in a, a Corbin Bosch in the cricket thing. And the, and Do you want me to bowl to you yeah, today? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Corbin's like, I'm just going to go train, guys. And here's the guy and he's, you, know, you want me to, to bowl for you? Yeah. Uh, no, that's going to really interrupt my day. Yeah. Um, that's the ADHD coming up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother story for the next episode. <laughs> 
that's the guy that you are. And what's amazing is that you've shown you can have great success by being a simple, humble, wonderful person. And that's a lesson that anybody can learn um, in, any walks of life. in any walks of life. Arthur, I, I can tell you, I, feel, I can feel you sleep today. It's I true. think this was more oh, words yeah. out of Arthur today than all the podcasts combined. Well done, my boy. So congratulations. Well, I'm also interrupting and I'm not taking a <laughs> anymore exactly. because I now I just need to step it up a bit. Yeah, but, but boo-hoo. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for today, um, and, and Arthur, as always, um, and, and, and also for all the fittings that you do for all of these players, you know. I don't think people always realize this uh, useless thing next to me actually has a very useful um, attribute in his life. Now, Arthur's a brilliant <laughs> club fitter. I mean, I went for a fitting with you last year sometime. Yeah. Yeah, it was end last, of last year. End of last year. I think it was the end of last yeah. year. And you opened my eyes to a whole nother world with which shafts I should actually be using in my irons and and lofts with woods and all sorts of stuff. So Arthur definitely opened my eyes to that and that's that's what's in my bag today, actually. Yeah. So thank you, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm there for, guys. And 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 um thank you to your parents for the roles that they also play. Yes. You know, in your role, uh, in your in your house. And then lastly to Savannah. Yes. Good luck with this HDHD guy for the rest of your life. Yes. Uh, it's going to be full of full of surprises. And, and I just want to finish there where I know what you said earlier. I really meant what you said when you said it's, it's not always easy. Because sometimes we have to smile and wave. 100%. Um, and I get that. And I really honor that, that ability mm -hmm. with you. But I want you to know, um, now that we've sat down with you and everybody that's listening, be who you are. And it's okay to have moments where you're perhaps not as as um, excitable on that particular moment. No one yeah. here is judging you, and I can promise you now, this show and everybody that's watching it, we massive fans of you, Carl. Thank you. You said earlier that Casey, as a younger man, inspires you. Yes. You inspire me and Arthur. Oh, thank you. you. Know, and I mean, we have a 15-year age gap between <laughs> us, and I'll speak for myself, Arthur, before you say it. Um, so thank you very much, and what an honor to sit here with you today. Uh, Arthur, I also appreciate it, and thank you very much for yours. No, that was today was fun. Thank you. Great, Thanks, Carlos. Awesome.